All right, so we're out here today. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of sawmilling. Uh, me and my dad. So we got a little Hudson walk behind band sawmill. And here's my dad. Hi, I bought this sawmill new in November 2001. So I've had it over 19 years, and it's been a real good, real good sawmill for me. It's a Hudson Little Lobster. The price was right, so so I bought it. And I've used it quite a bit, not so much the last four or five years, but before that I used it to, I made lumber to build a barn and a couple hundred fence posts. So it's been a real good mill for me. Now the blades, the blades I get from uh, Country Saw and Knife, they're out of Ohio, and they've, they've been real good to me. They always are very helpful, and uh, I appreciate that. So it's about time to order blades again, so I'll be giving them a call. And, uh, I'm down to maybe two blades, so I'll give Country Saw and Knife a call and get a new order in. So the way this works is it runs on these uh, pulleys that they just literally have a V-belt in them to make it the rise, so that way the blade will run on it on both sides. Then it's got its guides. Then it had a older motor on it. We put a little Predator. Uh, it seems to run pretty good, so we're going to get that log right there rolled up on it, locked in, and I'm sure the fact that we bought that Predator motor to put on it will piss some people off, but I don't use it enough anymore to justify replacing it with the original Briggs and Stratton engine. This motor was under $400, and like I said, we don't use it a lot anymore. And the old motor was a good motor, it just it sat for, I didn't use it for probably a year, year and a half, and it seized up so tight I couldn't turn it over with, with a breaker bar. So it was easy enough just to go uh, go get the, the Predator. Like I say, we mainly just use it now for making fence posts. Today, though, we're uh, cutting some lumber up for my grandpa. He does a lot of woodworking, and lumber is expensive these days, so we figured we'd come out and make up some boards for him to use in his woodworking. The handiest tool you can have with the sawmill is the can hook. I got that from, from Hudson. They have a, a catalog. And I bought that. After I, cut, after I cut my first log up, I decided I needed one. I didn't want to spend the money. That was the best, I think at the time, $60. That was the best $60 I spent. I use a wheel chalk to get the log to turn, to get it squared up to go on the, on the mill. To try and get it evenly spaced out between the between the two dogs, it holds better. Now I see this one. This one's bent. It doesn't hold as good. You have to have Michael take it off there and uh, heat it up in the forge and straighten it out. It works, but it doesn't work real well. See, this is a nice red oak tree. It was uh, standing dead. You can see it's a little bit rotten right underneath the bark, but the center's good and solid. We cut it off square anyways, so it'll make a good saw log. not turned up.
see how that works. This side is just smooth, and then this hook, when you bend this handle down, it bites in, holds it from rolling. <laughs> here which is kind of disappointing but we will get out of that so once we uh, get the top cut off see down here the rot's not near as bad so we'll still get something out of this log but uh, you just roll it up on its side put those back down cut the top off of it Roll it again, cut that top off, roll it again, and then you got a, a perfectly square log to start making uh, one by sixes or whatever we're going to get out of this out of it. See the rot's more on the edges here, still got about six inches of good through there. We'll get something out of it.
see we got three sides of it squared up now so once we get that top off we'll have a good uh, square there to start cutting into whatever we need. See how you can move the guide over there. You want it as close to the log as possible. And then he's got the crank. That moves it up and down. So that way you're getting the exact right amount off the top. Just under a foot by about ten and a half inches. So that'll make some good one by tens. I'm cutting on the, the mark is four, that's four quarters which you'll have a full inch thick board after you make the cut. Of course, the five is five quarters, six inch and a half, and the eight is four two inch. So I'm just gonna go through, this. it's not a very good log, we're kind of disappointed when we take an inch off at a time. And I may end up standing it up on a sand and get some of that rod, but it's not a, it, I'm disappointed it's not a good log as I hoped it would be. Then it's, it's dead, standing dead tree. I won't cut live trees down because it takes too long to the road. My father in law can rip them down and uh, get some use out of them. See, we got that top off and got the corner out. The next board we got uh, probably 11 inches of good wood. A little bit of bug infestation there, but there's still from here to here that's good wood. My grandpa will be able to rip that down and then plane it and have a good usable board. Here's some dad cut yesterday. Good uh, one by eight, probably. And then there's what we're cutting today. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip it over 180 degrees. Okay. Once I get down here, I don't have anything for the dog to bite into, so the dog's going to want to move around. So I'm going to flip it over, and then I'll have. At least I'll have some meat for it to find it too.
eventually now we'll be able to come in here and cut it down to about there where this rod is. Get rid of that. A little bit of rot here. But then right below that, it's good wood again, so. That's a pretty nice drain to it. I don't know how solid that's going to be. So about the bottom two inches we uh, can't really get to because the dogs can't bite into that little bit of wood without splitting it. So we just end up with one thick board, which is alright. As you can see, this one's a little bit rot more rotten on the outside. So I was trying to bite the cant hook into it. 
just kept ripping it out, but there's still a lot of good solid wood in the middle there. So we're going to saw it up. We got it here. Okay, so we got this one pretty well squared up now. So I'm going to start a time lapse of us just cutting it all the way down and uh, one by eight. So how you keep the blade cool is you got a water container up here with a hose that runs down to the blade and it just slowly leaks out onto the blade and it takes it around and that keeps the whole blade cool while it's going. That way you don't overheat the blade and detemper it and lose your heat treat and then your blade would get dull a lot faster. So now we're just going to put a tarp back over this and we put a log ground in front of it because one time in a windstorm, the wind caught the tarp and blew it all the way down to the end of the track and it ended up on its face down there at the end. So we throw a log there to keep it at the back of the track. All right, so that was the sawmill. Hope you guys enjoyed. We've had this since... 2001 I mean I was two years old when my dad got it and it's treated us well it's a Hudson like I say hope you guys enjoyed the video we do sawmilling fairly regularly we mainly get telephone poles and then cut them into squares and make fence posts out of them Tell, old telephone poles make great fence posts but we do a little bit of everything with it any wood we need around the farm we make our own good way to save money just wanted to thank you guys for watching tell you have a good one